We've been using the Coopworks Feed Silo for over a year and absolutely love it. In fact, I think the Coopworks Feed Silo is the best chicken feeder on the market, bar none. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how we've been using it, why we decided to pick this particular feeder after having tested dozens of other feeders and everything you need to know about this particular feeding solution. Now, when we started with backyard chickens for eggs, we decided we wanted to get a feeder that would reduce feed waste because we feed a fairly expensive feed, corn, soy free, organic, low poof of feed that we don't want to go to waste or at least only as little as possible. We also needed a feeder that would hold feed for a couple of days or even longer because we sometimes travel and we wanted to make the life of our farm sitter as easy as possible and also reduce chore times in the morning. Obviously, the feeder we have also needs to hold up to the elements, meaning to rain and snow and wind and anything in between. It also should be rodent proof or relatively rodent proof because we have obviously rodents around and we don't want to feed them with our expensive feet. And our feeder needs to be flexible enough so we can easily or relatively easily move it because we have a rotational operation, so we rotate our chickens, we pasture-raise them, and sometimes, you know, we need to move the feeder from one spot to the other. And the good news is the Coopworks feed silo checks off all of those boxes and so much more. So let's jump right into it and talk about the pros of that particular feeding solution. First of all, it's super rugged. It's a rust-free design that has been holding up really well to the elements. We've now had a summer, a fall, spring and winter, and it just looks like new, hasn't rusted, everything is working fine. The feed ports that it includes significantly reduces feed waste because the hens have to stick their head into the silo and eat from there. And so that means that they have a much harder time of wasting feed because if you watch hens eat, especially ours or at least ours, you know, in a feeding trough, in an open feeding trough, you know, they pick and choose, you know, whatever they like first and they flick stuff around and then a lot of the feed ends up outside of the feeder. By having to stick their heads into the feed silo, if they do that inside the silo, you know, all the stuff or most of the feed still stays in. That reduces feed waste. I also like that the Coopworks feed silo comes with different bases that you can pick from. They're all height adjustable. That means you can use it for different breeds, smaller breeds, larger breeds, and for different ages of your chicks. In the beginning, you know, when, when you just move the chicks from the brooder to the coop or to pasture, you know, they're still fairly small and you need to accommodate their height. And then as they grow, as they get larger, you can, you know, extend the, the legs and make it easier for them to eat. The feed silo is also fairly rodent proof, depending on the base that you pick. There are, you know, there are the tele telescoping, individual telescoping legs that you can use, which is the ones we started out with. There are single poles with different different variation thereof. And we have seen that the single pole is incredibly rodent proof because it's only one pole in the middle of the feed silo. And so nothing can crawl up and then, you know, get around the corner and get into the feed ports. Whereas with the telescoping legs, there is a chance that a squirrel or, you know, some other rodents could climb up those telescoping, you know, legs, hold with like one paw or arm and then still get into the feed ports. So... It depends on the type of, of base that you choose, whether or not the feed silo is more or less rodent proof. It can hold up to 80 pounds of feed. Now, there are different versions. There's a 40 pound and an 80 pound version with the 80 pound version. And that for us, we have about 40 egg layers right now, holds for way over a week. You know, again, it depends on in summer when, when our hens have access to fresh forage, they eat less feed. So it lasts longer. In winter, when their primary diet consists out of the feed we feed them, it lasts a little bit less, but it, it lasts for at least several days to several weeks sometimes. And we really like that because that means less chore time, less refilling the feed silo, etc. The cons, it's relatively expensive, not for the quality of the product you're getting, but overall, if compared with a you know simple feeding trough or maybe with a DIY-based solution, it's fairly pricey, especially if you need more than one feed silo, depending on your flock size, of course. Again, we have about 40 hens right now, and we are good with... Well, we actually have still several feeders, but the main feeder is our feed silo, and so one is enough, even though I think two would be ideal. It's also relatively heavy when it's filled, so depending on your strength and your, your size, you know, for me, it's not a problem to pick up those 80... If it's filled, 80-pound feed silo and move it from spot one A to spot B, not a problem at all. If you have smaller stature, maybe with less strength, 
you know, that might be an issue and you might have to wait until it's half full. From a design and materials perspective, the feed silo is made out of roto-molded plastic and that includes the body and the lid as well as rust proof hinges. You can even lock the lid to prevent maybe your kids or a raccoon for example to open the lid and get into it or maybe the wind from blowing it open. We've never locked it, we've never had any issues, the lid has never been open because of wind or, or any animal. So we just keep it unlocked, but you have the option to lock it. Again, we have the 80 pound capacity silo that lasts us for a long time. I really like that, that I only have to refill the silo maybe once every 10 days to two weeks or so. That's really convenient. Now, to be fair, you know, you cannot completely eliminate feed waste, but the feed ports significantly reduce it. You know, if, if I look at our step on feed or if I look at our open uh, feed trough and compare it to the wasted feed around those feeders to the feed silo to the Coopers feed silo it's like night and day so you can significantly reduce feed waste without making it difficult for your hands to eat obviously now let's talk about the basis real quick because that's an important consideration when you purchase the feed the Coopers feed silo you can pick between different types of bases we started out with the individual telescoping legs and they are super convenient, especially if you're on uneven terrain. If you're on uneven ground, you can individually adjust the height of each. You can, you know, have your, your feed silo maybe tilted to provide easy access for maybe some of your younger hens or smaller breeds and, you know, higher feet or raised feet ports for your larger breeds or the adult hens. So very convenient. Or if, if you're on an uneven surface and you want to, you know, level out the feed silo, you can do that by individually adjusting the length of each of those legs. I really like that. The only downside, there are actually two downsides of the telescoping legs. And one is that rodents might climb up or be able to climb up and then access your feed ports. That's a downside. And the second one is if you're too rough with those telescoping legs, especially while the feeder is full and heavy, you could actually bend the inside funnel that would then lead to feet potentially trickling out the feet ports. And we've had that happen because I wasn't aware of that. But if you open the feet silo, you see that there is a, towards the bottom, there is an inside funnel and the telescoping legs, they reach into the body. And if you push them either out or in, you can bend those funnel walls, which attach to the outside walls of the feed silo and so if you bend that then you open a gap through which feed can get in and then trickle out the feed ports and we've had that happen because we were apparently too rough but i also think you know maybe the design of that silo can be improved slightly to prevent that from happening but you know again i i think it was us being a little bit too rough now that problem does not happen if you use the the single pole base you know there are two versions of that there is one that you a stake basically you can dig in you can hammer into the ground and then put the feed silo on top of that we used it for a while as well and that's excellent on any type of terrain and it's rock solid the only downside of that is if you want to move the feed silo frequently then you have to always you know dig that stake out of the ground which you know can be a hassle depending on you know how compact your your soil is and how easy it is to get it in and out but there is also an x space with a single mount that is great for if you have an even terrain because it means it's rodent proof you know the problem with the bending the funnel walls wouldn't occur and it's easy to move it around the only downside of that x space is the x, x space telescoping post is that it probably doesn't work very well if you have uneven terrain that's the only downside but again you know there are three options available just pick the one that works best for you in terms of capacity i already mentioned there are two versions available one is 40 pounds or holds 40 pounds of feet the other one holds 80 pounds we went with the bigger one simply because of our flock size and simply because we wanted to have enough feed so we don't have to refill it very often. Whatever we can do to cut down on short times being, you know, automating the watering, automating the feeding is a good thing. You know, having an automatic chicken door that opens in the morning, closes at night, all of that significantly reduces short times and makes raising chickens, I think, in the long run, much more convenient and enjoyable. But again, you have two different sizes to pick from if you have a smaller flock and if you don't mind refilling it every so often. You can simply use the smaller one that holds only 40, 40 pounds of feet. It also has fewer feet ports. You know, maybe that's something to take into account. The large one, I think, has eight feet ports. The smaller one has probably six or so. So you get 
you know, again, depending on the size of the flock, if you have a large flock, you want to have as many feed ports as possible. So as many birds as possible can feed at the same time. You know, there's a pecking order. So you want to make sure that the birds lower on the pecking order also gets to get access to their feed and not have to wait forever. In terms of pricing, you know, one of the cons, you know, you can spend somewhere between 195 and 225 for a silo, depending on the size. It's not inexpensive, it's not cheap, but considering the quality of the materials and the convenience that feed silo provides, I think it's totally worth it. For us, it certainly has been. Again, we've had it for over a year and it's the best feeder we've had. Hands down, we love it. It makes everything so much easier, or feeding in particular so much easier. And the cool thing is, if you like the idea of the feed silo and you also want to have a similar solution for watering, Coopworks has a solution for you as well. It has a water silo that you can actually get with a floating valve and a hookup to a garden hose. And what that means is you can you have water all the time without having to worry about refilling the water because as soon as the float valve you know goes down because your water levels go down, the attached hose automatically gets water back into the silo and so you never have to worry about refilling your water and if you combine this then with maybe a solution like the freeze miser which we've recently reviewed then you can also be sure that you have water even during freezing temperatures you know and so that's really a cool thing i like that now one thing that's important for any solution especially if it's if it's something expensive that you spend a couple of hundred dollars on is customer support and when we first discovered that a rodent or rodents were eating our feed, I reached out to Coopworks customer support and one of the owners, Tom, responded immediately and sent me uh, port covers, you know, that, that you can use to cover the ports, the feed ports at night if you have a rodent issue. Now, at that time, we used the telescoping legs and we switched over to the individual stake, the single pole stake. And funny enough, there was still something eating our feet. And then later we discovered it was actually a raccoon and not a squirrel, which I suspected in the beginning. And so obviously, you know, a raccoon, you know, is tall enough to just reach into the feed port. There's not much you can do other than trying to keep the raccoon away from, you know, the feeding area with electric fencing or whatever. We trapped, you know, shot and then ate the raccoon. So the problem was solved by then. We have not had any raccoon since then. But the bottom line is customer support is top notch. You know, I reached out, they immediately, you know, responded and sent me those feed port covers for free. Later on, when we had the issue with the bent, you know, funnel walls, they offered to replace the product without asking any questions. So I really like that. I think that's important whenever you invest in a solution, especially an expensive solution, that you have proper customer support. The bottom line is the Coopworks feed silo has been working excellent for us. We love it. We're going to invest probably in more of those. We're going to use them in order for our meat birds for on our pasture to rotate them. We might be doing the smaller versions that are easier to move so my wife can move them as well. But everything else has been top notch. We love it. So let us know in the comments what feeders you've been using in the past, what you've been trying and how you like them. And if you would consider giving the Coopworks feed silo a try. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, stick around. I hope you'll see you in the next video.